Mr. Rajdeep Adat is going to take a session on the uh, GUI part of Open Forum on uh, Block Mesh. So I hope Rajdeep, you are ready. Okay. So uh, so we have a GUI uh, built for Open Forum. It's a, a project that we had begun in 2021, and initially there was another software previously built here at POSI. And uh, we had reversioned it and refurbished it to work with the newer versions of Blender. And since then, we have tried to expand on its capabilities. And uh, we are really looking forward to uh, bringing this into um, a beta release version. So uh, today's session uh, on the GUI for open form is not really uh, just about the demonstration of it, or perhaps I'll try to make it as much as, as much hands-on as possible. But we also want to know what uh, uh, you people think about it and uh, how um, what are the features that you would expect from a graphical user interface uh, for a software like open form wherein everything is so text-based that it is uh, often very verbose and cumbersome to write these texts so having a graphical user interface really helps when you are able to uh, automate some of the tasks if not all of the tasks per se so uh, essentially, this is what our objective uh, with a graphical user interface for open form is, is we basically want to automate uh, quite a bit amount of tasks with open form and um, make open form work like a black box. And essentially, the user doesn't really um, directly go into open form and work with um, like, you know, the entire case files wherein you are writing everything from scratch, or even if you're copy pasting, you're essentially writing text. You don't really necessarily Really have to do it, but um, part of it really involves uh, creating the case files with a graphical user interface. And all, after that, all you really have to do is just transfer it up to Open Form for uh, the solving part. So the one that we are presenting today, because Open Form encompasses the entirety of the CFD simulation process, wherein we can mainly divide it into meshing, solving, and post processing. Uh, we are only showing meshing today because that's where our development has extended up till. Um, so let me share another uh, screen from my tab. So uh, let me begin with just a little bit, a, a little part of the theory first, because uh, we kind of really need to know what um, we, are, we are doing with um, the this, this sort of a software. Meanwhile, I'll just post the link uh, for the new um, system that we have. So uh, previously, the people who were attending the, um, uh, the the installation section, they had worked upon uh, the installation process and they have gone through with it smooth, smoothly. So what we will do is we will uh, post the link of the new zip, uh, zip file into the chat box so that you can always be updated with it. Even the old one should work, but uh, I would prefer you guys, if you're working with the new one, that's much better. So, so just go to this link in the chat box and then you can uh, start uh, downloading it. All you have to really do is download it. And for those people who don't have Blender, I would suggest you to uh, just uh, watch this, uh, watch our session today. And if you have any further questions, I'll take it after the session. And we'll also go through the installation process if you're really interested in uh, doing this right at this moment. So uh, let me start with a little bit of theory as to why we are using Blender, because yesterday someone asked about this uh, and I gave him the answer, but I don't think everybody knows about this. So having Blender as a software, it really helps us to um, uh, integrate a lot of things together. Because whenever you're working with open form or CFD per se, uh, you happen to have a geometry uh, or, or domain where, which is defined as an area where your fluid is um, present. And in this area, you, there is some kind of interaction with the fluid and the geometry itself. So what we really need with an open form is these text files called as uh, you, you have basically have two options, either it's the block mesh dictionary or it's the snappy X mesh uh, dictionary, uh, which you utilize to define or model the geometry per se. But the thing is, writing these uh, geometries is quite difficult. Now, often a time you have to visualize the entire geometry in your mind, kind of have to try and like, you know, uh, think about what uh, 
what it would look like if you were to decompose the geometry into multiple different blocks. And that is itself difficult. And on top of that, you also have to calculate the uh, information in the geometry, that is the vertices, the length of the edges, and also calculate it, calculate how the edges, how the vertices of the geometry have been ordered. And OpenFORM itself has these very stringent rules upon the ordering of these vertices. And uh, if you don't follow the ordering of those vertices, you might make a mistake. Now, if you're having a really complex geometry, what happens is uh, this task becomes very difficult to do uh, just by a single person or even, uh, even if you try it multiple times, there, is, there are chances that you're going to make a mistake. So why not let a software really do this? Because that's not where the actual learning is right. So the objective of utilizing Blender is to be, is to be is to build a software on top of it, which can do this kind of a job for me. And essentially, that is what uh, we are trying to do over here. So good thing with Blender is it is able to integrate all of these things. Why? Because it has a very neat interface for defining uh, my geometry. So I can very easily define my geometry. OK, I can very easily model them. And there is a complete uh, graphical user interface for a software, for Blender, which allows me to model the geometries very easily. Second thing is I can query the data out of this geometry using a scripting language or, or uh, the one that I use is Python. And I can directly store this into a uh, system directory. And I don't really have to uh, do much when I'm utilizing this. The second thing is, if I were to utilize Python's graphical user interface capabilities, like you have so many libraries like PyQt is there, you have Kiwi, you have Tkinter. All of these libraries are really useful in uh, building graphical user interfaces. So many systems have been built on top of them. Uh, good thing with Blender is Blender itself has its own uh, internal system for building a graphical user interface. And, and Python itself is the interfacing language for it. So what we do is we build a graphical user interface on top of Blender. Okay, Anything you build on top of a Blender is called as an add-on. And this add-on seamlessly installs into Blender. So that is essentially what we're doing. And now I have one very neat way of interacting with the geometry and querying the system, in, uh, querying the information out of the geometry right into my system directory. And I have a set of automated tools that I've written in Python, and I've uh, put them into a GUI for um, seem, like, like more convenient usage. So that is essentially what uh, we are doing here. Now, uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, take up a case and we're going to solve that case uh, in front of everyone and see whether our system itself works or not. So uh, I hope that uh, those people who want to follow up with me in this and those who have attended the installation uh, session, they should be able to follow with this. And the, in the chat box, as I have already sent the link for um, the GitHub link, uh, all you need to do is uh, just download it and you have to install the uh, add-on right into Blender. So I'm just going to shift over my um, screen and let me go back. Okay, so let us start um, installing the add-on. So this is essentially Blender. And uh, so if, if anyone is there on the chat box who can, who can give me a thumbs up if they are able, they uh, have already installed Blender and have that system in the, have it in, have it in their system, then I will be able to know who, who, who all are following. So I think, uh, okay, so we have Joseph. Hi, Joseph. I remember you. Rahul, Tanmay, okay, great. So we have a couple of people here who have um, these Blender installed. And I hope you have also received the uh, new GitHub link, right? All you have to do is just click on it and click the download button. And like this very same way in which you installed uh, the add-on previously, this one has some new additions over it so that you can uh, do some additional stuff on top of it because we are taking a little bit more uh, complex geometry approach, not very complex, quite sim simple actually, but uh, it should be very easy for you to work with. Okay, so in my screen, you are able to see that I have the Blender Preferences window open. Uh, in order for me to open the Blender Preferences window, I go into the Edit section and I open up Preferences. Okay, this opens up Blender Preferences. 
Uh, if you are on Windows, I I hope you guys know how to open a Blender. It's uh, similar to any other application. Just how you open Microsoft Word, you should be able to open Windows as well. For uh, people who are working with uh, Linux, uh, you have to open it via the terminal. Or if you already have kept it in your taskbar or you have installed it as an application, then that is also good. You can directly open it just like how you open a normal application. Um, so I'm not going to go into how do you open Blender direct as of now, but if you, in case you do have the doubt, I'll clear it up later. Okay. So now I'm going to click on the install button. Um, I have already downloaded the zip file uh, from the link that I don't uh, previously posted. Um, download it uh, and I'll go a little bit slow so that you can also catch up. Okay. Uh, because this process is kind of important. You don't install the add-on, then uh, nothing proceeds after it. So, so here we have the uh, file browser window, wherein you can see that I have in my downloads folder, the uh, venturial.zip zip file. So I'll just click on this and click on the install add-on button. And you can see that Blender gives me a message that uh, it says modules installed from uh, Venturial. And you'll get a little bit of information upon what Venturial is, um, uh, about the author, what it does, and all you have to do is just click on this uh, enable button and it will enable the UI right in front of you. So this is the UI for Venturia. If it doesn't appear, sometimes it doesn't. So what you have to do is you have to press the N button. N stands for Nagpur, okay? So just press the N button and that should open up the sidebar panel, okay? That is where Venturia itself comes up. In fact, any other add-on which is installed within the uh, Blender system, often you will you might find it right over here. There are many famous add-ons like screencast keys and all, which uh, always come over here. Okay, so this itself is our uh, UI. Uh, it is also like um, like you can also see that you have a lot of help options over here. So in case you feel the need to reach out to us, also you can directly reach out from there. Uh, you also have some development options over here, uh, which are not really, uh, as of now, that useful. Okay. Then you have the three uh, sub-processes of any simulation process. So you have a meshing process, then you have solver control for, within the simulation section, and then you have post-processing utilities. As of now, you should only be able to see the meshing part. Okay. Uh, and we will be updating with the simulation as the as these post-processing part as well in the GitHub repository. Okay. And before I proceed further, um, I should also tell you that if you, uh, you should also start the GitHub repository because that really helps us spread the word and it helps our system become more and more popular. So uh, please just do that for us. And I hope you have a very nice session ahead. Okay. So let's get back. So essentially the one panel that you see on the left side over here, this is nothing but our file manager. It's a very simple file manager. It doesn't do anything as such. It just creates a simple uh, initial block mesh file for you. Okay. So today the example that we're going to look for is based upon the block mesh uh, dictionary. Okay. So I'm going to show you the example uh, before, uh, before I start with this, but I'm just giving you a brief intro as to what our UI looks like. Okay. In the right side over here, this section, is where you design your geometry. There are certain tools, like, you know, you move around these uh, vertices or the edges or the faces, you can just move them around and uh, like, you know, create your geometry as per your need. Then you have the vertices section. Here, uh, this vertices section, this tiny section over here. This is where you query the information out of a geometry into your block mesh dictionary. This information is the information related to the vertices of the geometry. Okay. The se section over here is the, as you can see, that it's uh, related to boundaries. So this is where you add your information about boundaries. Okay. Uh, then finally, you have uh, this section over here, this one. This is where you add the information about different blocks of your geometry. So you have geometry, for example, cavity flow, there is a single block. Uh, and a simple eight vertex cube. Um, so essentially you add that information over here. And uh, this is all there is essentially like as of now, which is of importance just for the um, example that we're gonna run through. So I'm just gonna take up the example here. Uh, 
So let me just bring the example up so that I, I just draw the example for you people so you kind of understand what we are doing. Okay, may I know where are those options on Blender? Uh, sorry, uh, which options are you saying? Uh, are you talking about the preferences option? Okay, I'll just show it to you again. Okay, so right on the top bar, can you see that there is an edit section? Okay, uh, onto the edit section, you go to this preferences option. If you click on preferences, and then you have these various uh, options on the left side, okay, uh, interface themes, um, and then you have viewport, uh, and this in this section called as add-ons, okay, you just click on add-ons. So if you click on add-ons, you should be able to see the list of all add-ons that are by default available on Blender. Okay, these are official Blender add-ons. Okay, the one that we had downloaded just before is uh, you can just type the name in the search bar. And you should be able to see the uh, add-on that we just downloaded. If you have not installed it, I'll just click on the install button again. Okay. And uh, right on the install button, you can see that all you have to do is basically locate where the file is. Okay. And this is nothing but a simple uh, file browser. Okay. Uh, and once you find the file, just click on it and click the install add-on button. I'm not going to click on it again, uh, otherwise it might throw some errors. So essentially that's what you have to do. So I hope I'm clear, uh, who was this? Vinay, okay. I hope I'm clear Vinay. Okay, great. So if everyone is able to follow till now, that's good. Uh, meanwhile, I'll just um, go back to my, okay. So here we have, uh, so I'll just describe what uh, geometry we're trying to do over here. So, what I'm really trying to do, like, I, I don't know if you guys have seen this sort of a geometry before, but as we already know that there are so many different um, things that you can actually do with block mesh. Uh, essentially, the concept that goes behind block mesh is nothing but you have these um, hexahedral blocks. That is what um, OpenFoam calls it, okay? These hexahedral blocks are nothing but uh, eight vertex geometries, okay? Um, normally, if you have a perfect hexahedral block, then it's a, uh, it's a it's essentially a cube, okay? And what you do with uh, Blender is um, you join these two blocks to create a geometry, okay? Now, I, there could be n number of blocks, okay? I, I, there is absolutely no restriction as to how many number of blocks you have within uh, Blender, okay? And if I wanted to create like, say a simple geometry wherein I have uh, one block over here, I can join another block on top. I'm just giving the top view of that geometry, something like this. And then I want another block over here. I want another block over here, okay? From this side, I'll say that there is an inlet, okay? From this side, I just want an outlet and I want to simulate this sort of a flow. Okay, but uh, you know that this is gonna be a cumbersome process to write uh, in your block mesh dictionary. So the way I kind of work around with this is I put all of these blocks into Blender, okay? So I'll come to the um, geometry that we are working upon today. Um, this is nothing but a simple uh, Venturi tube. It's a very primitive Venturi tube rather, uh, but it kind of uh, does the job for us. So here I have, So this is the top view of it, okay? Everything else is essentially the extension of it in the Z direction as if you're extruding it, okay? I'll try to draw it a little bit uh, in 3D if I can. Maybe this might give you a better perspective if I'm drawing it correctly, that is. So this is, this is how it kind of looks, okay? So from there's a face over here from where I'm defining my inlet and there is a face over here from where I'm defining my outlet. So this is my inlet and this is my outlet. Now I'll also mention that we should always take care about the um, coordinate system in which we are working in. So the coordinate system that I have designed for this particular geometry is wherein you have negative Y axis in this direction, uh, the positive Z direction, Z axis in the top direction and the one coming towards you is the positive x-axis, okay? 
and the dimensions of it for the sake of convenience i'm just going to take it randomly into blender um and it doesn't really matter much uh, although you should be careful about what um uh, like you know uh, about certain parameters like the convert to meters parameters so you should be careful about that but uh, try to take the same um, dimensions that i am taking so you should be able to follow with that exactly as per uh, i am doing okay now i'm going to switch over to blender to design this geometry in and query the information of the geometry right into my block mesh dictionary and you can see how quick this is going to be okay uh, I will I will make it a little bit slower for you people, but as you practice with the GUI, you will see that you 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 will become very efficient with it, and that's what uh, the entire purpose of the GUI is is to make you productive, not waste time behind uh, the things that are cumbersome. Okay, so let me just shift over. Okay, so now I am into my Blender view. Okay, I can adjust the width of this by clicking on the uh, left edge of this panel. Okay, you can just click on this and hold the click and then just drag it along uh, as much as you want. Now, I feel that it's comfortable right around at this much size, which is just about half of my screen. Okay, so someone is saying how to open the add-on after installing that. Okay, so have you installed the add-on, uh, Lalit? Okay, so after installing the add-on, you should be able to see the name of the add-on right in front of you, okay? And there is a small tick box on, on this corner. Can you see this? Click on this uh, tick box, okay? And it should immediately install it into your system. If you already have clicked it, then it should be in your system. All you have to do is just go out of the Blender preferences window and click the N button, okay? When you click the N button, N, N for Nagpur, that is, it will open up the add-on right in front of you. It, it might ordinarily be a little bit smaller like this, so okay, something like that. If you open it up, uh, then you have to click on the uh, left side of the edge and just expand it. So does that answer your question, Lalit? Okay, great. So uh, I hope everyone is uh, caught up till this point because we have yet to begin um, our uh, geometry itself. Okay, but we won't be wasting much time here and we will immediately start with our geometry. Okay, so as I mentioned, first we should create our file. Okay, uh, we, ju we just need to create our block mesh uh, dictionary. Uh, so uh, I'm just gonna click on the new mesh button. Okay, so it opens up a simple pop-up for me. Within this, it asks me which tool I want to use. Okay, I can either choose block mesh or snappy X mesh. So for this uh, session, we're going to take block mesh. And by default, it already recognizes that your um, dictionary name should be block mesh. Tip, so it has already done it for you. Okay. Once you have done that, you have to select a path as to where the block mesh dictionary should be. Blender is a GUI for open form to create geometry and mesh. Yes, uh, you can. Blender itself is not the GUI, Siddhivinayak. Uh, Blender is the platform on which the GUI has been built. Okay, there are other GUIs for different other different kind of purposes. Uh, not only for open form, there are so many other GUIs that you build on top of Blender. Uh, uh, Venturial itself is the GUI, so you can say yeah, that is. Uh, you can click upon the uh, like you know the main center of it to find the logo of it. So that is what uh, we are doing over here. Okay. So um, coming back to, um, so I'm just going to click on the new mesh button again. If uh, you guys don't need to do it, select the mesh file path. This is where I want to set my uh, file path. So I might go to the download section or I might go to the desktop. I already have a few block mesh ticks in the desktop. So uh, let me just create a new file over the new folder over here. Uh, all you just need to make sure is like, you know, have a clean folder. That's it. So I'm just going to name it folder. I'm going to open folder. I'm going to save it over here. Okay. Um, here I'm just going to click on the new mesh button. Let me zoom the screen somewhat if possible. Uh, do we have an option like that? I think the thing is with Blender, 
Um, you don't get an option to zoom into your screen, but I'll see if I can do it with the... Uh, it doesn't seem to give me an option. Um, but I think the resolution is fine, right? Like uh, I'm also viewing it another PC, so I'm able to see everything I can. Uh, yeah, you can, I think, uh, like maybe you can I, increase the font size, but uh, is there a way to view, zoom into a particular area? I think that is what uh, uh, Siddhi Vinayak is asking. But I don't want to increase the font size because that just brings the font out of the panel sometimes. So that might get difficult for everybody else. So uh, I hope I, I think you guys kind of have to adjust with this. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna select this uh, path and gonna click on new mesh. And I'm just gonna click on okay. So this will immediately create one uh, block mesh tip file for me. Okay. So when I was saying unable to locate the new mesh through select mesh file path. Uh, maybe you can click on this red colored button. Okay. Uh, that What that will do is it will just delete it from your memory and you can create a new mesh file path again. Uh, maybe try that in the same process that is. Uh, let me know if you feel the issue, like if you are not able to like, you know, follow through. I'll take it up with you after the session finishes because I'm main, I'm maintaining a keen uh, like you know watch on the time, so I hope I want to make sure that we get through with this uh, as quickly as possible, and then I can take your doubts as well. Okay, uh, the thing with this is it's so uh, fast that you don't have to worry about uh, the time uh, of simulation and all those things. Okay. Uh, okay, so now that we have created our block mesh uh, file, it's just in the RAM memory of our system. Okay, it's not yet there in your hard uh, hard disk. So what this will do is uh, it is just going to create a virtual memory that can that is there just for some time. Okay, that's just a temporary memory that we have, nothing else. Okay, yeah. So into this uh, view section, you have this option called as this hand. So this is can you see this option? Okay, if you hold this, you can pan the view and you can move it around as much as you want. Okay, with, with the middle mouse button, which is the scroll button, if I put my cursor into the view and I hold it and move my mouse around, I can rotate this or orbit this around. Okay, so in that way, I can work around with my uh, 3D view. Okay. I kind of like to like remove the other part as well. So if this kind of shows and is uh, reducing the size of the screen, then you can hold this and kind of bring it towards the right. Okay, um, right at the middle, you should be able to see a double arrow when you bring your cursor uh, right at the partition. You should be able to see a double arrow and hold that um, partition and bring it towards the right. Okay, uh, and then you get some little bit more space into this. Um, so with this, you, we, we are yet to still start our geometry design, okay? Uh, now I'm gonna start bringing the blocks up. Now, if you look into the geometry, uh, you have uh, essentially three blocks, okay? If you remember the geometry that is. So you have these three blocks. So I'm gonna sort of select three cell shapes, okay? OpenFoam mentions these blocks as uh, cell shapes. So into the, into the GUI, you will see that as cell shapes instead of blocks, okay? The block type that we have here is hexahedron, of course. We have other options as well. Uh, some of them are experimental. Prism is still there. Uh, maybe on your own time, you can experiment with it and let us know what you feel about it. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to take hexahedron. Okay. Then I'm going to click Add to View. Okay. What this will do is it will bring these um, blocks into my viewport. Now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I think I had zoomed out too much. So just let me bring that up. Oh yeah. Uh, so all I'm doing is, okay. Uh, in a way that was good to restart because some people might think. So it's it's actually important for uh, you to know that in case you end up in a glitch, how do you restart and come back to the step that you were? Okay. Now into my file system, you're gonna show my file system. 
Okay. So this is my home directory. Uh, Chintak, are you able to see my home directory? Right into my home directory, I have um, I have Blender 3.2.1. Okay. Uh, this is the main part system of Blender 3.2.1. Right click into this area and click on open in terminal. Now, alternatively, you can also um, like you know go to the taskbar and do it, but I prefer to do it this way because in this way I get to see the terminal as well. Okay. So I have the terminal open over here. So there's the terminal. Okay. I'm going to click dot slash, and then just press blender. Dot slash basically means presently in this folder, find blender. Okay. Click on enter. And then go back to how. So it just opens up blender just like that. Okay. Let's select everything. I just want to like remove this. This is of no use to me. Uh, what Blender comes up with. So if you want to select that, just hold the mouse button and uh, click on this, um, click on any side and just extend it. And you should be able to uh, select everything that is there within that box and then just press the delete button. Okay. Now I think uh, if I have saved the preferences, Venturial should already be there. Okay. Now, because I quit Blender, uh, the previous block metric file that I put into my RAM memory has gone. So I'll have to bring it back. So I click on that uh, mesh, uh, like new mesh button again. Go to uh, the desktop. I have that folder over here. And let's click new mesh. Click on OK. So it creates that for me again. Okay. Uh, essentially, this is how far we have uh, progressed. Okay. If it is not coming, then you go to the edit section and go to preferences. Just the way you installed it, it should come back up again. I said it, it is probably because in Blender you have not spent enough time for its auto save to work. That's why the reason is it's not coming. But as you use it more and more, uh, as you use it for more number of time, it should be. Okay. Sajdeep, can you once again demonstrate how to load the Venturial dot yeah. this preference? Yeah, sure, sure. So go to the edit section. Yeah. Uh, edit click, preference. Click on preferences. Yeah. Okay. Then you can see the add-ons section where my cursor is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right over there, find Venturial in the search box. If you have or not already installed it, uh, that is. Yeah. If not, it's not there. It's not there. Actually. Okay. No worries. So go go to the install section. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. on, on top of the search button. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where you have installed Venturial located, I had it in my downloads file. So okay. I went to my downloads folder mm -hmm. and I clicked on it. Yeah. Okay. Then click on the install add on button. Okay. Okay. So now we'll uh, move forward. Now I wanted three blocks into my view section. So I'm just going to select three over here and click add to viewport. And this adds my blocks to this viewport, okay? And then I'm gonna, uh, like, you know, on the right side, I can select this toggle X-ray button, okay? If I toggle X-ray button, I can uh, see through the blocks and I can see the edges that are not even visible uh, from the front, okay? Now, if I want to move any of these blocks, all I have to do is select those blocks and just press the button G. Okay. In that way, I can move them out. Okay. Now I need to make my geometry that I previously showed. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enable snapping. Okay. What snapping does is whenever I move the block towards the geometry, it immediately snaps it uh, to the type of geometry that I've described. So in this case, I'm selecting vertex and it will automatically snap it to that vertex. So I take this block, I click on the button G and if I move, you will see that whenever I bring it to a vertex, it automatically snaps it to that vertex. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to snap it to this uh, block right in the middle. Okay. Then I want to create uh, something like an outlet flow. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold this and I'm going to uh, extend it bit onto the y-axis. Okay. So in order for me to do that, 
select this block, press the S button, okay, and then press the Y button. What this does is it allows it to expand only along the Y direction, okay, and I can move my mouse and move it around the Y direction. After pressing Y, I can press the button uh, 2 to scale it twice its length along the Y axis, okay. And that's, then I'm just going to press enter. After that, again, the G button, and I can move it as per as I like that. Okay. Then I want to move this one as well. Okay. So in this case, I'm just going to bring it towards this side and then just place it right on the, onto the side. Okay. Uh, the way I moved it was by pressing G, just like how I previously described. Now I'm going to go to the face select mode, okay, by pressing on this button over here uh, into the faces panel. So this is like the boundaries panel, okay. There is a button over here. It's called the face select mode button, okay. Click that button and it should take you to the face select mode, okay. Now, when you select the faces, you can see that uh, there are tiny dots, uh, purple colored dots right onto the uh, faces. How to move the block? Okay. Select the block, okay, Abhimanyu, and then press the button G. It should move the block. Uh, basically, it uh, holds onto your cursor and then you can move your cursor around. Okay. After that, uh, you click on the face that you want to scale. So, uh, as per the geometry that we saw, I'm just going to scale it up a little bit, not much. Um, let's say just this much. I think that should be enough. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not going to go into the numerical part of this because essentially that's where you set your dimensions and all. Okay. That might take uh, way too long for us to finish it within this session. But if you want, we can take that up later on as well. Then you go to this block. Okay. I have to scale this block as, uh, up as well. I'm going to press the face uh, um, select mode button again for this block. So this brings me to the face select mode for this block. Click on this face and then press the S button. That allows us to expand it as per our requirement. Okay. So I'm just going to expand it a little bit. Uh, just about this much should be fine, I think. So this is the kind of geometry that I was looking forward to. Okay. Once this has been done, uh, I can go out of the face select mode and I'm now into the object mode where I wherein I can individually select those blocks again. Okay. But remember that these blocks are currently separate. They are not joined yet. So that basically means right at the edge, there is uh, there are always two two or more vertices uh, at the same three dimensional space. Okay, or at the same point. Now, whenever we create a geometry, we don't repeat these vertices. We need to remove these vertices from our system. Okay. So what we then do is. Just like how you previously selected these objects, uh, I can just do a box select. Okay. If you don't get how to select the box, I can also click on these blocks individually. And while holding the shift button, I can shift select all of them. Okay. So Rampalkar has a question How can we sure that if we want to expand it with certain dimensions? Okay. Uh, good question. So actually, that's what I said, Rampurkar. I can get back to you on that in another session or after this uh, after this workshop. But the way you would kind of quickly do it is you select the block and you go to the item section on the right side. Okay. Here you can see the dimensions of the block, and based upon those dimensions, you can set the dimensions. Okay. Now I'm not changing it, but you can very easily do this. Okay. Now. Now, once we have done this, I'm going to select all of them together. Okay. And then I'm going to press the compose button. Okay. So compose button is what it removes all the vertices, which are repeated and it removes all the faces that are also repeated. And it creates a singular geometry right point. Okay. Uh, now you won't really see any change per se, but if you try to move this block after pressing G, you won't be able to do that. That basically means that you have locked this geometry. Okay. Now, all I need to do is query information out of it. Um, now, um, I'm j I just have a simple get vertices button over there. Can you show me again how you merge the vertices? Please? 
Uh, just press the compose button. That's it. So by pressing the get vertices button, I get all the information of, a, of, of the vertices of this particular geometry. Okay. There are a total of 15 vertices. Okay. Uh, so, sorry, 16 vertices over here. And I have the information already present with me. Okay. Now I'm not going to touch this area because if, so if you were to select one of these and press the delete button, uh, you will be able to delete that. Uh, the, the, the reason why we have given that option is basically the amount of control that a text editor gives block mesh to a user uh, should not be taken away, right? So all of these things, like these buttons over here, you can ho hover over that button, just keep your cursor over here, don't click on it. And it gives you a hint as to what it does, okay? And uh, be sure to, if you're deleting a vertex, then be very sure that you don't need it, okay? So this is how you get your vertices. In the same way, when you need an ordered pair of vertices to be mentioned for your uh, blocks, that is how you define your blocks. So I think the way you do that is by the right-hand thumb rule around the um, base of the block, and then go towards the X direction, then towards the Y direction, and then towards the Z direction, right? So you can click on the, uh, the get block section, and that will uh, query the blocks as well. Okay, so now you can see that there are three blocks, and you get the ordered pair of these blocks uh, right with you. Okay, so that's what um, this basically does. So now I should also set the number of cells that I have to uh, select for these cubes. Okay. So I'm just going to select the um, um, blocks that are there, okay? And then go to the set cell section, okay? To select these blocks, just uh, click on the checkbox right at the uh, right right hand side of these um, right hand side of the get block section, okay? Just click on these individually, and then uh, click on the set cells area. So on, along the x axis, I want the number of cells to be around twenty. Along the y-axis, I want it to be 20. And along z also, I'll just keep it 20. Okay, that's it. So you will see that in this way, you are able to set your cells for each and every individual block. Now we come to the faces section. Okay, so uh, just, just like how you uh, set your faces, you have to select your faces. Okay, click on the face select op option. Okay, now, as I previously defined this as, yes, uh, yes, when it is, it is also possible to do that. Uh, there is an option called as import geometry, uh, and you can import any CAD or STL file uh, as well. Okay, so on this side, I'm going to click the face select mode button. Okay, select this face. Okay, to select this face correctly, uh, make sure that you uh, select the uh, select the point which is most closest to this purple point. This purple point is nothing but the center of that face. Okay, you can also see the normals of that particular face or uh, of all the faces by going to this section on the right corner. Okay, this is called the viewport overlay section. Scroll right to the bottom and click on this normals area, wherein the third option gives you the size of the normals. So you can just bring them out and see how the normals of these uh, faces are aligned, okay? You don't need to do this. This is not a step. This is just a uh, annotation that I've given so that you know what you're working with, okay? Understand what we are doing over here. I'll just disable this and uh, come back to my uh, system. Now I'm going to name this as inlet, okay, into the boundary name section. And this is going to be a patch. Okay, and I'm just going to click on add boundary. So this just adds the um, inlet boundary condition um, onto my the boundaries area. So this is basically the area where I can select the boundary, just like how you have one for vertices and how you have one for blocks, okay? Then you have uh, outlet as well. So I'll go and select the outlet face. So this is my outlet face, okay, the bigger face. I'm gonna click on outlet. 
enter. Uh, this is also going to be patch. I'm just going to click add boundary. So I have outlet as well. And finally, everything else is nothing but a um, wall. So I have to select a wall for everything else. So be careful while selecting this. Okay. Uh, you can press the shift button to select multiple edges, uh, multiple faces like this. Okay. So I've selected the ones that are on the right hand side. Now I'm going to select the ones that are on the back side. So you might have a little bit difficulty with this in the beginning, but as you kind of work with it, you get better and better at it. Okay. Also, you need not worry because there is a block mesh file also with um, as an examples. So if you're downloaded the zip, you can uh, unzip it and see that there is an examples folder. So you can run the block mesh file from there as well. Uh, but this is how we're going to actually do it. Like we're going to demonstrate that this generates a block mesh. So I recommend that you utilize the file that is within your system. Okay. So then you have the bottom faces. So this is one of those faces. Sorry. This one. Then comes this one and comes this one. So we have selected everything which is other than the inlet and the outlet. Okay. Because you have not selected the inlet and the outlet in this uh, section of the uh, process, uh, you should be able to see through. Okay. Uh, so far, is everything clear? Just give me yes. Okay, good. So now we're just going to select wall over here. Okay. And I'm going to name this as fixed walls. Make sure that you follow the naming conventions as well. Okay. And click on add boundaries. So you will see that all the fixed walls are present as well as the inlet and the outlet condition. Okay. Now you essentially have acquired everything. Okay. So all you need to do is go to the run section. Okay. And click on the generate block mesh dictionary button. And this will generate the block mesh dict file for you. Okay. Where will it generate the block mesh dict file? It will generate at the point where you initialized it. Okay. So I did it in a folder called as a folder named as folder in desktop. So I'll go to that section in my desktop. Okay. So let me just open that folder up. So here is that folder, and here is the block mesh dict file that we just generated. Okay. Now, how do you know that this is actually generated from the GUI? Because when you open that block mesh file up, it says right in, on top that it has been generated by GUI. Don't worry about the version that it mentions about here, and it says open from version 7 because it's been built for previously, we built it for open from version 7. And you can see all the information being present over here. Okay. So this is our block mesh file. Now, uh, if you want now, now if you want the remaining four files for the case, okay, I already have it within the um, virtual zip file, okay. So I'm just gonna click here and unzip it, okay, and I'm gonna open it up. Into that, I have an examples folder, and there is a zip file for the case file that we're gonna work with, okay. Click on uh, expect here. Now I have my uh, system folder. So for you people, I have already added one block mesh dict file. Okay. Uh, that one has also been generated from the GUI. Uh, now I will replace it and I will uh, like you know just put it up over there and start the simulation. And the simulation takes just about a minute or two uh, in my system. It might take less or more in yours. Okay. So let me just bring that folder up. I'm just going to remove the older block mesh dict and paste the new one. Okay. So now I go and open in terminal. Okay. Have the terminal open. So let's, uh, I'm using OpenFORM 9. Um, as I said, it doesn't matter what version of OpenFORM you're really using, especially with block mesh. 
somebody's mic is on i think uh, please uh, mute your mute yourself and then uh, i'm just going to click on i'm just going to type blockmesh now normally a gui should be able to do this right the reason why i am doing it manually is basically because i realize that so many people here are using different platforms while it is envisioned that we like you know build a system for different platforms um, we really want like you know to make it as uh, compatible to different platforms uh, as much as possible but the issue with wsl itself is that it separately does not have a graphics rendering system so uh, when you install blender into wsl you happen to go across certain issues uh, which at the moment are not yet diagnosed because of which we have uh, kept that uh, separate but i'm quite sure that this is something that is also possible uh, in a developmental version of our add on we you can, there is a button where you can directly click on that button that says uh, run block mesh and click on that button and it automatically does the job for you so if i click on block mesh as you can see that i am able to properly run the block mesh file so i am quite sure that now my uh, mesh file has been done okay now let's see whether the um, mesh the, the solving part is possible or not so i'm going to type so i'm, I'm going to use the icofoam form uh, solving so it has started at least it has started the uh, solving process so it kind of takes a minute for this to finish up so meanwhile i'll just go back to uh, certain other things that we have within our system so also i should let you people know that um, so i'll just introduce my team you are already you are introduced so abushan here is uh, a person who has really helped me with this project okay i am myself uh, the developer of the software uh professor jayani and professor prabhu are the advisors uh, for this and pile who has been you have already met pile so in addition to that we also have uh, fossi internships that are kind of going on right now so you can go to fossi's webpage and um, find the internships as well uh because open form gui is currently a system that we are in uh, building it's currently in development we are expecting this to come up with it so because of which we are hiring interns for this um, so the internship task is also available and you, everybody can apply for this so feel free to apply and uh, come up with a solution for the screening task and if you are able to uh, solve the screening tasks then you should you will also be able to, you will also get a chance to uh, participate in the development of this nonetheless you can always contribute just by going to our uh, web page uh, not our web page sorry our uh, github page and if you feel that you have certain issues so some people over here were not able to uh, like pressing after pressing the add uh, add on add to viewport button the blocks were not coming okay so that means that there are certain issues for some people so you can click on that uh click on the issues section and draft an issue over here okay or so all you need to do is just click on new issue and it will give you a, a, a text box to write your issue and i will be directly responding to that um, so that uh, your issues get resolved so the more issues we have we are able to address to more and more number of problems okay so now the simulation has been done so so let's just open up a paraview and see what our result is i hope the mesh is uh, properly done this time because that's very important for us to uh, that because essentially what we did was meshing part we didn't do much of the solving part over here okay so we have a very nice mesh exactly how we envisioned it okay so uh, can we see the uh, wire part oh yeah so it seems that the mesh is also smoothly generated and it is exactly how we envisioned it so it was in the negative y direction so i think it is correctly uh, spaced as well yeah it is correct so now we can see the velocity profile
So it's kind of how we expect it. So, so this is what we are able to do. So you saw that we never really touched a single text file uh, throughout the block mesh dictionary generation process. Um, we have even more features because block mesh just didn't con contain uh, like, you know, the hex part, the vertices part, and this part. There are so many other things. Like, uh, you can add curved edges as well. Uh, the thing is, I haven't shown the curved edges part over here because we have it as one of our internship tasks. So if you are able to solve that, uh, essentially, you are a very strong candidate for an internship as well, and uh, you should be able to like you know uh, work with that. With the internship, uh, we should be able to ex expand more upon our system, okay? And that is what we aim to achieve. So I hope you guys are encouraged a little bit. If not, and uh, this is all we really wanted to show, okay? And if you have any more queries upon this, I think some people had those queries. I will. Uh, definitely help you with that. Okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> Razip is actually welcoming interns. If anybody okay. is interested to work on this area, uh, he'll be happy to work with you. And uh, also let me um, uh, tell that uh, Razip actually, uh, he was he took inputs from our team members, uh, Divesh Varya, who was there with us, uh, from Ashutosh uh, Shridhar and Mano Pitviraj. They also were our team members and uh, they also, Razip took inputs from them also. So yeah. let me acknowledge them <laughs> as well. Yeah. yeah. So all of our team members, I think, uh, let me just show everybody who were there. So Ashutosh and Manu were our previous colleagues over here. They are, they are currently doing their master's in uh, Germany. Divyesh, uh, I think you will meet Divyesh tomorrow. Uh, Ashley Melvin is currently doing his PhD at IIT Bombay. Karthik was an intern just like myself. I was an intern here as uh, too. Now I work as a research assistant. Uh, Mr. Ankit Jawalkar and uh, Ankit Jawalkar had advised us a lot about uh, some of these uh, Python related stuff. He's an expert in Python. And uh, finally, uh, Mrs. Shweta Shida, she used to be our previous project manager. Uh, and she that's when I, I had originally interned while she was the project manager. And of course, our professors who are absolutely brilliant here. So Professor Prabhu and Professor Jenny have been with us since day one. So that's what they like, you know, a lot of the things that you see over here are basically because of critique from them. And it's very important that we mentioned that their work uh, has really helped me a lot. Okay. Also, uh, the entire FOSI team is uh, to be thanked here. I, I can't mention everybody, but uh, yeah, thanks to all the FOSI team. So, uh, for those people who had these queries, uh, I'll definitely address them. So if you want, you can uh, wait a little bit um, and also fill up the feedback form. In the feedback form, you should be able to see questions about the GUI. And I understand that some people of you had some issues with the installation, some had these issues with the UI itself. And if you haven't been able to um, do it, then definitely we will uh, help you with it. Okay, uh, so with that, I think my session, I'll end my session. Uh, if you have any further questions, so please let me know. Yeah, even Abhushan is also there. So if you have any questions for Abhushan, if you have any questions for Ajdeep, they'll be happy to, happy to help you. Yes, this is Dr. Joseph Prabhu. Actually, I'm from Indian Register of Shipping. Hi, so Joseph. Rajdeep, actually, you are doing a great job there. Uh, first of all, I thank Professor Janani and Professor Prabhu for making great initiative to do form this FOSI and making a GUI for this open form. So, Rajdeep, what actually we do here means uh, I actually do normally my problem is, is a two-phase two flow. We will be having a ship, so air and water will be the interface. And sometimes we'll do single phase for submarines and open water like kind of things. So uh, we actually, I am currently working for last two years, I'm into open form. Actually, we have commercial software also, like okay. Star CCM and the ship flow kind of things. So mm -hmm. we are now currently a little bit shifting towards open form as they will charge as commercial software will charge heavily. And for even if you, uh, for multi uh, core, even core, if you are using eight core, 50 core, we need to pay for them every time. So yeah. that's what, we are keenly interested towards open form. So I was really surprised to that you are working a great GUI for it. It's a great initiative. You start, you have made for making it block mesh. 
actually i can do resistance and uh, resistance test for two uh, two phase flow in open form okay. so now for that um, i will be using snappy hash you will be aware of that yeah snappy hash mesh so yes yes can the same similar way can i incorporate that snappy hash mesh also into this Yes, so we actually have another option over here at Snappy X, but the reason you can't select it is basically because this GUI that I had shared to you is specifically for uh, like this particular session. The part of Snappy X is currently in development, and you can see that like you know we are uh, updating our uh, data profile regularly, so you should be able to see that uh, as well as as and when we are able to develop it. Okay. Also, there are some other add-ons for Snappy X Mesh as well, but uh, they don't uh, they you know do the job quite um, seamlessly. Like you kind of need it to work fast, right? That's the entire yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, that's what we are currently aiming at. And uh, if you have certain like you know uh, thoughts about how you should start going up with a Snappy X Mesh add-on, what are the things that uh, you would expect from a Snappy X Mesh add-on? Yeah, we'll because, be yeah, so if you tell us that, thing. right, uh, what we will be able to do is incorporate that. So essentially, we are working backwards from our customers. Okay. Uh, we okay. are not like, um, uh, like, you know, you we produce something and we just uh, throw it off into the uh, world just for people to use and never mm -hmm. attend to it for yeah, afterwards. Yeah, it. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay so so this Benjurial farm, you worked on Python, right? For yeah, creating. it's completely written in Python, full 100%. Okay. Uh, but okay. there are certain source files as well, which are okay. written in C and C++. But uh, as of now, they are not really added here. So we have another developmental version of this add-on where the source files are existing. But the thing with those source files is you need to build them. Okay, uh, And the building process is a very cumbersome process, which we can't do within one hour of um, like a session. That, yeah, yeah. Is, that thing itself takes another hour. Um, so... So that's why I had not uh, mentioned that here into the session. But uh, in the future, if we are able to accommodate another uh, full-on session just for GUI, then I think definitely we can open up uh, those features as well. They are quite advanced. So uh, in those, you can even do curve geometries. You can uh, actually create meshes out of it. Yeah, uh, actually, we face problem here, actually, meshing. Meshing is the thing. Mm -hmm. We will have refinement zones and, uh, and our based on the inflow velocity and y plus values. Some we will not get a, at a single go. We will, our we will, our solution will not converge. Yeah. So we meshing is the main problem we face here. Once meshing is mm -hmm. and meshing is proper, then solution will go. Yeah. So we we are looking for uh, if you did later in future if you can add some and. Uh, and tutorials on Snappy Gasmus, that will be better, I feel. Yeah, definitely. Uh, not only that, there are these like you know features wherein uh, you can intelligently mesh stuff. So often at times you are uh, doing a trial and error, right? Yeah. Upon based upon empirical data, you can actually find out as to what parameters are best for your system. Okay. And you okay. can preload them into your system and work with them. But those things are like, you know, all along the way. And I think uh, months down the line, we will probably be working on that as well. Okay, fine. Thank you, Raj. Yeah. I have one small doubt. Yes. Uh, in this, we have shown the three blocks. Mm -hmm. Is there any possibility we can increase the number of blocks? You can make n number of blocks. It doesn't matter. N tends to infinity. Okay. Using, using this the, on the same code, right? Yeah. That's uh, okay. like, you know, just add more and more number of blocks. Just keep adding it, keep joining them. They should automatically append it. If it doesn't, there is a glitch. Mention it in the um, issues in GitHub. We'll look into it. Okay. And you also mentioned that uh, there is an option uh, from where we can uh, import uh, uh, yeah. any geometry from uh, whether yeah. it's SolidWorks or anything. Yeah. So that is where the build mesh option is. So, when you click on this option has currently been uh, disabled because the thing is that uh, when you build mesh right uh, there is a separate parser that comes along with uh, build mesh okay it essentially converts a, a previously built stl file or any kind of cad file into something that is interactable with blender okay so in order for that to do there is a parser that is involved that parser is quite heavy 
And I do not want to put it into a simple one MB file. It is quite uh, big to install. So that's why that feature is not there. However, if you want to try it around, okay, it should eventually come up in the GitHub repository as well. Okay. And you should be able to see within the release notes that this has been particularly mentioned. Also, this point that you mentioned, right, it is there in our feedback form as well. So in the feedback form, there's a question as to what features you're expecting from this GUI to come up. Okay. And that's where there's a function where you want to import measures from other sources. So that's what we, we are planning because that will expand the girth of the, or expand the domain in which we are working. So. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, here, can you uh, increase this block uh, from uh, three to four? Is it possible to so here? Uh, I, think, right? I think it's possible. I'll just clear it out once. Uh, uh, sir, can like this, uh, whatever you saw, sir, it's very interesting uh -huh. <laughs> because it, it generates a block match dish directly. So yeah. can I use, sir, same way for complex geometry, which have curve and like this, sir, like yeah, blood vessels yeah. modeling? Yeah, can yeah, I yeah. do, sir? Yeah, you can. So there is a section for edges as well, but you might not find this section to be fully working. So the reason it's not working is actually quite funny. So we have to uh, take up interns for uh, working with this sort of feature. Okay. So we currently have polyline as well as arc. Okay. But spline and B spline have certain issues. Okay. Which is why you won't be able to see them working properly. So um, you can see that there is, within the internship task, we have actually put one of those curve fitting tasks over here wherein you are building a spline uh, kind of a function and uh, you're putting it up into your geometry. Yes. So yeah, complex geometry is what we are currently looking to. That's our first most priority. And uh, bringing up curved edges is something that you want to do it immediately. That's why we are taking up interns for it. If you are interested, you can apply or if you can just put up a request into the, uh, you know, the, into the issues section, or just do a pull request if you want. That is also something that you can do. And if you if you are able to like you know come up with some solution, I'll merge it into the uh, actual repository. That's a that's a very important thing to do. So thanks for mentioning that. I should I should have highlighted it myself. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Rajat, this Blender is a modeling software, right? Yeah, a 3D uh, geometry modeling so software. Here I can import an dot stl file and i can create the domain and i can do the meshing here uh you can uh, open it up from stl which is that option itself is there within blender okay. but converting it into a block mesh dict is where the parsing is required that's why you have a separate option called as build mesh okay okay okay, okay. so build mesh what it does is it gets that information out of another uh, source file and it converts it into a proper uh, open form interactable dictionary so that's why we have a separate option called as build. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Just we can model it. Meshing we can't do it here. Yeah, you can you can model it and create the block mesh dictionary per se, but okay. not the mesh information. So it's not a mesh generation software. It's rather mesh defining software. Okay. Yeah, then we can generate the block mesh file here, and we need to run the block mesh and generate that. Yeah, file yeah. So in the actual, uh, like, in, there is another developmental version wherein there is a run option over here. Okay. okay, that that works primarily on Linux. Okay, and you click on that, it automatically does the job for you. you don't even need to type it. You can even open Paraview from it within this. So that is also there. Okay, okay, okay. Actually, we'll, we use Salome also for meshing. Yeah, but it is a Salome. It can't handle heavy files, and sometimes it will keep on crashing. That's issue. Yeah, that's one benefit with Blender. Blender can have, handle files very heavy. Like if you have a, like you can even um, switch on to GPU mode if you have a GPU that is, uh, okay. and it should be able to handle even large files because in Blender you design entire worlds. Okay, people do non-stop things. Like even in my own GitHub repository, you can find certain stuff done on Blender. Okay. Um, so you will find that an entire um, solar system was modeled into Blender, and that file itself was around. Uh, after rendering it, it came around 450 MBs, which is not much, but for one person, it is way too much. So you can see that it is quite efficient software, and Blender itself is very light. Okay, fine. It's like only 200 MB. 
other heavy softwares are in gigabytes okay sure rajit we'll plan something when proceed further in this yeah thanks thanks i will mail you huh? sure sure okay. uh, you can find my mail address yeah, yeah i got it i got the mail yeah. okay thank if you anybody wants to uh, get in touch with me you can directly mail me uh, just take a screenshot of this if you uh, want to text sir it is possible to create any car model by using the blender software vehicle uh, model well yeah you can uh, but the thing is it won't be as comprehensive as a uh, cad modeling software the the thing with blender is um like you know when in, whenever you work with blender one of the issues that people have faced with is uh, its ability to uh, properly mention dimensions okay now by default there is a section of i if you go to the item section uh, wait stab and go to the item section you should see the dimensions of it and you should also see scale rotation location all these information they still do not uh, they still they still not adequate to model something as complex as a car right to the dimensions that you expect it to okay however yes you can actually model a car okay but it it will look like a car it will be very much exactly like a car it won't be just right to the right dimensions so you have to be a little bit careful about that but yeah i think we can still do it if you or rather if you build something on top of render like a separate add on just for like you know handling those uh, dimensions i think you can there is even an add on called as measure it uh, which does that job for you but it's it's still not adequate enough to uh, do something as complex as a car but yeah one thing i can assure you that you will be getting a number of tutorials upon um, the block mesh part of this especially if it comes up with the um, curved edges geometries and all those things right uh, it will immediately start having tutorials uh, we hope to make video tutorials as well uh, and put them up on posi's website so uh, it will be just like how you worked with uh, open form Uh, you will be able to work with that as well, so you can go back and back and forth. Very easy. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Ramkumar Kaur is asking a question: Droplet size and velocity. Okay, except as we do for velocity and pressure distribution. Okay, I don't know whether you can do the droplet with a block mesh per se. Uh, it may not be an accurate or droplet, um, but as of now, we do not have that capability. Maybe with Snappy, I think you might be able to do it. So, are we done with the questions? Ah, uh, yeah. Of course, you can do multi-phase flow study in open form. I mean, uh, I think like you know, we have people here who are working upon multi-phase flow. So you can just drop a mail with the contact uh, dash cfb at the right posi dot in to ask your questions about multi-phase flow. Perhaps someone from our team can just uh, take that up and ask you. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. So this is the contact details. Uh, CFD Fossi dot in. Other than that, uh, you can also directly go to Fossi's website and reach out to Fossi directly if you want. I think this is the website. This is the internal just page. Uh, uh, I think a uh, pile can give you more information about this. Right? How you how you can rightfully contact us? Yeah, sure. So I'm uh, I'm waiting uh, till tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll give all the details. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. Our contact details and uh, whom to contact for which for which purpose? Yeah, that would be good. So yeah, that yeah. questions can be so properly. If you have directed. any queries for the CFD team of uh, Fossi, which uh, which is working on open form and open form open form uh, GUI, you can always write to us at contact CFD. I'll just type it in the chat box. So people who are looking like there are students over here. I saw there were many students. So if you are looking for internships, do apply and internship. The dates are still there. Uh, you can submit your task till twenty third yeah, of Jan. Twenty eighth. Twenty eighth of Jan is the last date of registration. Yeah. Yeah. So you can submit it till twenty third of Jan. I think you can even uh, like if you do some good work. We will definitely look forward to working with you again. So, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, uh, Atharva, if you're asking for 
um, the registration for the internship, then yes, there is a Google form in the website. I'll just keep the website for you. This is the website. So the criteria is mentioned in the um, internship selection, the qualification section. Okay. It doesn't really actually, honestly, it doesn't really matter from which field you are. Okay? As long as you show a good interest and you're able to solve the uh, screening task, that's what we are looking for. We don't care about Solving the people. screening task <laughs> is the main uh, criteria. Yeah. So whoever solves the screen, screening task will be selected and they can work with us as interns. Okay, so uh, uh, Madhava, what we can do is I can schedule a, uh, like, if you want, I can stay back with you. Uh, you can share your screen and uh, solve that. Uh, go ahead, Madhava. Uh, for me, the options here are not with not there. Uh, okay, uh, you are on which platform? Is this next? Okay, you are on Windows. Okay, okay. Um, have you re tried reinstalling it, Madhava? Uh, Blender. Yeah, no, no, not Blender, the add-on. Uh, no, sir. Uh, uh, okay, try reinstalling it. Meanwhile, just uh, go to the help section. Yeah, click on the help section. Uh, sorry, the window section, not the help section. Okay. Uh, click on toggle system console. Uh, right with the last option. Okay. Okay, so it's it's not showing any errors per se. I think you are uh, utilizing the wrong uh, zip file. It is the one that was sent to you previously. I had sent a new one. So the new one has some uh, source files separately kept. Okay, but don't close this. Uh, you should be able to get, I'll just share the link for the new one again. Okay. Try installing from there and uh, there you go, Madhuva. There is a yeah, click on download. Uh, you don't need to open it, uh, just go to Blender and install it. Uh, okay, sir, I'll try. Yeah, the, remove the previous one before you do the new one. Uh, sometimes uh, okay. it creates a uh, error saying that this is already installed. Uh, okay, sir. so it won't I'll be an error per se, it would be a warning. So that's it. Okay, sir. I'll try that. And uh, if any problem comes, I'll uh, come to you too. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Thank you, everyone. You are a wonderful audience. Uh, I hope uh, you all end up like, you know, apply for internships. You are encouraged to raise issues into our uh, GitHub repository. The more we have, the better our software is. Thank you. Thank you. And have a great day. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you, Rajdeep. Thank you, Abhushan. Thank you, team. And thank you, everybody. So see you tomorrow.